Hey guys, well, this is it. And I just want to thank you for enduring uh, through these 40 days with me. So many of you have been so faithful and so kind uh, to share these videos and watch these videos and, and, and give me encouragement from them, but I appreciate it. Uh, so this is our last video uh, in the series and I've been blessed uh, by studying the word with you. And I hope you've got a blessing as well. I, I want to read to you out of John chapter number 16 as we close out our 48, our 40 days together, uh, beginning in verse number 29. And this concludes a, a lot of teaching that our Lord had a lot of time he'd spent with his disciples before he went to the cross. Now listen to what he said. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speaketh thou plainly, and speaketh no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee, by this we believe that thou camest forth from God. And Jesus answered them and said, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yes, and now is now come, that ye shall be scattered, and every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now all of us know what it means to endure heartache and sadness and heartbreak in our life. Listen, almost on a weekly basis, we know and are reminded that we live in a fallen world. The Bible reminds us that not only uh, are we sinners, uh, certainly we are saints now. Those of us that have been saved are saints, saved by God's grace, but certainly we live in a world that is under the curse of sin. And one of these days, as Revelation reminds us, that curse is going to be lifted. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. But we grieve. We battle discouragement uh, and, and depression and, and a lot of things that, that, that come our way. People disappoint us. Problems discourage us. The prince of the power of the air attacks us. And all that is a part of being in this world that we live in. Because remember, Jesus reminded us that we are not of this world. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. We are otherworldly beings because Christ lives in us. This world is not our home. Aren't you glad? Uh, but while we are here, we are to impact our communities and our county and our state and our nation and the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Jesus said in this world, you're gonna have tribulation. You're gonna have trouble. You're gonna have problems. You're going to experience pain. But listen to what he said to his disciples. And I'm telling he's saying it to us as well. He said, but be of good cheer. Cheer up. Literally, that word, that phrase means to take heart, take courage. I have overcome the world. So not only has our Lord overcome the world, but the Bible reminds us in the book of Revelation, and also John talked about this in his letter uh, of 1 John, that we are overcomers. Because our Lord is an overcomer, we are overcomers. And we can take heart and we can be confident because our Lord has overcome the world. No matter how hard this world may beat you and me up and, and attack us and go after us and a lot of things we face that are just a product of living in this sinful world, Jesus has overcame this world. He has defeated sin he has defeated Satan, and he has defeated, defeated death. I want you to listen to this phrase I heard a long time ago. There may be some things that may hurt me. In other words, cause me pain. People can betray you and they can break your heart. Uh, circumstances can be difficult, almost unbearable. But while things may hurt me, listen, things or situations can never harm me because I am eternally secure in Jesus Christ. And I'm thankful that we as God's people, we've got a better place to go. And even the sufferings of this present world, Paul said in Romans 8, are not worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us one day. So that's the hope that we have that we can look forward to. And he offers us his peace. Do you know what he said in John 14, verse 27? He said these words, he said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus offers us his, pay, his peace. And he wants to transform our hearts when they become troubled. He said, don't let your heart be troubled. 
neither let it be afraid. I'm offering you my peace. The world offers a peace that sometimes comes, well, if you have enough money, that'll give you peace. Well, that's not true because I know a lot and you know a lot of wealthy people that have everything that they could ask for, but they don't have peace in their heart. Uh, he offers his peace to us that comes from a relationship with him, a personal relationship. In fact, I'm gonna tell you something. Jesus wants to be more real to us through the power of the Holy Spirit than he even was with his disciples as he walked with them. In fact, in John 14, 21, he said, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. The Bible says that scripture, that word manifest means to reveal. So Jesus wants to reveal himself to us. In other words, Jesus wants to be real to you. Can I ask you a personal question? As we close out these devotionals, is Jesus real to you? Uh, I think that's a valid question. Is he real to you? I will tell you some ways that you can determine that. I know that this weekend I'm planning on going to church. I'm planning on meeting with God's people. And when I go to worship, I'm just not going to a building, but I'm going to worship the King of glory. I'm going to encounter the presence of Almighty God because Jesus is a reality to me. When I give my offering, I don't give just simply to the church, even though that's part of it. I am giving to the God who is the most generous and has blessed me according to his, to his riches and glory. And, and I'm giving out of a thankful and a generous heart to him. I tell you, certainly when I, when I read his word, it's just not an academic exercise uh, that I might gain information, but I want to experience transformation because I believe the word of God is the breath of God on paper. All scripture is inspired by God. And, and certainly it is, it is the breath of God. So God wants to be real to us. I just want to leave you with a quote by the oft, often quoted A.W. Tozer. And he said these words, he said, put God in his rightful place and 1,000 problems are solved all at once. I'm gonna tell you that don't make your problems go away. That don't automatically make the sick well or the heavy hearted, light hearted, but I'm gonna tell you what it does. I believe our greatest need is to surrender completely to the Lord Jesus Christ because he is coming again. He could come today or it may be 50 years from now. No one knows that day or that time because he said as I'm, uh, the way that I'm leaving, those, those messengers, those angels told them he will, he will come in like manner. So get ready, church. People get ready. Jesus is coming. So we need to be ready and we need to want to take as many people with us as we can. I hope you have a great day. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. God, become a reality to me, even more real to me and to those that are listening and those maybe that are not our friends and our family that I pray for. Lord Jesus, transform our troubled hearts and give us your peace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.